Yes, good evening, everyone. Just check it. I am audible or not? Okay, thank you for telling me. I think the other resource person, uh, Professor Nashad uh, Ali, is here. Sir, are you here? Uh, and now, Charles, sir, are you here? Yes, uh, uh, and now, Charles, sir, are you here? I think this is uh, not. Uh, Najat sir, are you here? Can you listen to me? Okay. Uh, today we will discuss on the second day and second topic on ethical considerations in contemporary research methodology by Professor Najat Ali. So I think we just wait. Uh, he is coming. Actually, he is not reachable. Nasha, sir, are you here? Just a minute, eh? Just time to okay, okay, sir. Okay, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you. He is coming on just a minute. Actually, he has replied. And people, so let me start. Now. I am thankful uh, to Mr. Rafiq for the nice introduction and uh, telling something about me. So, today, what we are going to discuss this is uh, research ethics, as you know. Uh, we all are doing the research. I hope uh, all of you are research scholars and maybe some faculty members. So could you introduce yourself? I think we are having very few people. I think you can introduce yourself so that I can uh, understand uh, which back background you people are coming. Yeah, Dr. Naushad, this is uh, Dr. Chandrasekhar. Yes, uh, yes. I am a faculty member of the management department of the University of Kerala. Uh, okay, you are faculty member of the From which university? Kerala University. Which one? Kerala University. Toronto. Okay, Kerala University. Okay, good. Okay, good. Mr. Shagal, okay. Or others? What about others? I think nobody is here. I am able to see uh, Ms. Asha here, Mr. Hari, Suparna. Hello, sir. Good evening. Yes, good evening. 
हेलो सर गुड इवनिंग मिस आशा हेयर यस यस और काशी यू फ्रॉम विच यूनिवर्सिटी कुक्षेत्र यूनिवर्सिटी सर विच वन हेलो कुक्षेत्र यूनिवर्सिटी कुक्षेत्र यूनिवर्सिटी हरियाणा ओके ओके और व्हाट अबाउट अदर्स हरी गुड इवनिंग सर गुड इवनिंग वेरी गुड इवनिंग माय सेल्फ हरी शंकर आई एम फ्रॉम सेंट्रल यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ केरला पीएचडी स्कॉलर यू फ्रॉम सेंट्रल यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ केरला यस ओके ओके योर रिसर्च कॉलेज विथ सब्जेक्ट सर इंटरनेशनल रिलेशंस एंड पॉलिटिक्स इंटर रिलेशंस ओके इंटरनेशनल रिलेशंस ओके और एनीबॉडी एल्स Superna. Okay, sir. I think we did it. Yes. I think our uh, star uh, muted. I think so. Don't go to speak it. Okay. So what I understood is we have one faculty member. Sir, 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 sir. Excuse me, sir. First of all, I want to introduce you, sir. Actually, we are not introducing you. Okay, no problem, sir. <laughs> It's okay. okay thank I, you I, very much. Okay. <laughs> I will introduce thank you. Sir, sir, thank you. Okay, dear participants, uh, we are thrilled to introduce an eminent scholars and distinguished academicians, Dr. Ali, currently hold the esteemed position of professor in Aligarh Muslim University Department of Library Information Science, UP. With a career spanning over twenty-three years, he brings a wealth of teaching and research experience to table. Dr. Nawshad Ali, scholarly pursuit have traversed multitude domains with the primary focus on information management, knowledge management, e-learning, and e-publishing. His dedications to the pursuit of knowledge is evident in his impressive body of work, which include the publications of six books, edited volumes. Along with over eighty research papers in prestigious national, international journal and conference proceeding, in addition to his prolific research output, Dr. Ali has been the guiding force for the numerous aspiring scholars under his mentorship. Eleven individuals have earned their PhD, while two have completed their MPhil degree, and over seventy have. Successfully defended their MLIC dissertations. Dr. Ali' editorial progress shines through the, his role as the editor in chief, General of Knowledge and Education Management, a peer-reviewed journal that has been intellectual beacon since in inception in April 2011. His influence extends beyond the confines of academia as He has been sought after the speaker, sharing his insight and expertise through the numerous invited talks at both national and international conferences and seminars. Recognized for the global contributions to the field, Dr. Ali has received favorable grant to the present his research paper at the international conference held in countries such as United Kingdom, Germany, France. Malaysia, Bangladesh. Notable, he was honored with the IFL World Library Informations Congress Participation Award from from the International Federation of Library Association and Institution in Hay. Dr. Ali's commitment to the advancing knowledge is exemplified by his successful completion of six major research projects funded by esteemed organizations like. DST, DST, UGC, and ICSSR, among others. He has also played wide role as deputy coordinators of UGC, SAP, DRS for group project. Currently, he is actively actively engaged in ICSSR in press research project on social media.
As an educator, Dr. Ali has been instrumental in shaping the academic landscape of his department. He served as the chairman of the Department of Library and Information Science at AMU from 2009 to 2012, leaving an indelible mark of institutions. Furthermore, Dr. Ali is an active member of the various national and international profession, associations, and organizations, including the International Council of Knowledge Management and American Society for Research. Join us in the welcoming Dr. P.M. Noshad Ali as a part of his profound wisdom and expertise in workshop. Bharat Digital Academy has organized a one-week workshop on academy advances in research methodology or methodology. 26 to, uh, 26 to 30 September 2023. On the second day during the sessions of one week national workshop on advanced since research methodology, I request our resource person, Professor Noshad Ali PM from AMU Aligarh, to kindly enlighten us and commence his lecture on topic ethical considerations in contemporary research methodology. Yes, over to you, sir. Thank you, uh, Mr. Rafiq, for a lengthy introduction. Okay, I think uh, let us start now. Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. yes. So, uh, what I want to say uh, today's lecture, uh, we can say this is uh, about the ethical consideration which you have to follow while you are doing the research. So we all are researchers and uh, even if you say the faculty member we are a, a library professionals, whosoever it may be, whosoever uh, those are working in academics or scientists, all we are considered as researchers. So we are doing the research in one way or other way. So doing research, it's not that uh, difficult job, but to maintain our ethical things there, or to maintain our values, while to maintain our principles while doing the research, it is playing a very important role while we leading our research. It will reflect our research result. It will affect while our generalization of our research findings. And moreover, it will consider us a, a moral, moral of our researchers. So let us see sometimes why we are breaking our research ethics sometimes. Sometimes we are not understand what are the things which have to be followed while doing our research. So knowingly, unknowingly, we are doing a lot of mistakes. Researchers have to do the mistakes. So today's lecture is intended to create an awareness about this research ethics among the researchers. So let me share the PPT. Yes. I hope my screen is visible. Yes. Rafiq sir, my screen is visible? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. You are visible, sir. Hello? Yes, visible. Okay, thank you. Okay, so this is the topic research and ethics and publication skills so today we are not discussing about the publication skills we're discussing today only the research ethics okay 
So what I understood, what if you're doing a research, what is the ABCD of our research? Most of the researchers, generally we'll say ABCD, what is AB, what is ABCD of your study or ABCD of your work? So what is ABCD? A stands for the adaptability. As a researcher, we should have an adaptability. We should adapt our topic, our problems, the environment in which you are working. And we are adaptable to the methods, the methodology, the techniques and the technology which you are uh, using in our research. The research tools which have to be used and uh, you have to adapt the new techniques and tools for the research. So I can say E stands for the adaptability is one of the ABC, one of the ma major feature of our research, adaptability. The second thing is that if you're doing any research, first of all, you have to identify the, what are the best practices where you can conduct the research. There are many methods or there are many ways you can do the research. After conducting the literature, thorough literature review, we can understand what are the best practices which have been following in that particular topic, that particular areas. So this is another concept, another feature of our research is uh, B stands for best practices. And C is a competency. The researcher should have the competency to do the research. Because you know, many topics which you have to select for our researcher. In a researcher, if you say in a researcher, there are many ways you will be, your, there are many methods you can use to select the topic. Okay, sometimes you will get the topic. That means somebody will assign the topic to you. Because suppose you are doing the research on a particular scientific organization. The topic and problem is already there. You just, you have to start your research with the problems. But if you are applying for a research project, you are developing a problem. You are designing a research problems and you are doing it. If you are applying for a PhD work, you are desiring the topic. So while you deciding the problems or while you select the research topic, you have to identify the competency which you to continue that which is the work, the competency is with you or not. Okay, you, every human beings or every researcher, they have their own weakness, their own, they have their own strength. So we have to find out what is our strength, what is our weakness, and what are the literature available for that? What are the advice which I, I am going to get it? What are the supervision or guidance which I am going to receive on that topic? So it depends on the competency you have to be, go for the research. That is another component of research that we see competency. And D is the directiveness. Okay, the direction is very important for the research. Many researchers I find they will select a topic for doing the research. I find in the PhD also. And after started doing the research without going for their thorough literature review, and they will tell select some attractive or modern topics. After that, they will not get any direction to do the research. And uh, I witnessed there are some people they have changed the topic during the uh, time of the pre-submission by your research. So this is, you have to identify, you should have the proper directiveness to do your research. And the final, I can say, the term I added, it's ethics. The e, ethics, it is a, another, another component, the important component of the research is ethics. You, to, you should follow a proper ethics in doing the research, okay? Earlier, maybe we are not following some principles or methods, it will not be effective much. But nowadays, if you are doing research in an unethical way, so it may spoil your career, it may spoil our uh, job, okay? A lot of things are there, in, for example, the plagiarism and other if, uh, things are available in our community. If you, anybody wanted to uh, tarnish you, I think they, they can take your papers and they can verify with the uh, softwares which is available for the checking the similarities. And they can file case also. So such a type of uh, ethical issues and problems you find uh, while you do the research. So ethics is another important.
So uh, what I will feel for a researcher, this A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D, E, these are the major component, major factor that we have to be follow in our research. Okay, so let us see what is the ethics. Okay, people say, say about what is ethics, you should follow ethics. So what is ethics? Ethics is a combination of different components, different meanings. It's a very complex things. We cannot explain in a single word. Let us see how, how we are going to explain it. For example, ethics is a norms for conduct that distinguish between acceptable and unacceptable behavior. Okay, if you have in the behavior with the acceptable or with which some behavior is unacceptable, that norms and conduct, that distinguish, that ethics is distinguish between what is acceptable and unacceptable. Okay, so that means there are some norms of conduct is there. These things which you have to do, and these are things which you are not uh, supposed to do. Okay, so that is a norms of conduct. And there are, this is, ethics is considered as a rules for distinguishing between right and wrong. Okay, these rules will be deciding which is say or galat. Those things will be say or galat. Those are rules, distinguish karte hai. Say or galat, the right or wrong or difference. Or ethics is also considered as a method, procedure, or perspective for deciding how to act or analyzing the complex problems and issues. Okay, ethics means a method, a procedure, a perspective hai. that will decide how to act for analyzing your problems, hai, complex of problems, your issues. Hai. How you will be going to sol uh, uh, get a solution of your problem? So for that methods, your procedure or the perspective which you are adding, that we are calling as a ethics. Or somebody can say ethics is a standards of behavior. Okay, a behavior is standard. That suits their particular aims and goals in disciplines, institutions, and the professions. Okay. A set of standards that is ethics. Okay, and finally we can say ethics is the principles, values, morals that you will be expected to follow. Okay, so it principles there have principles that is how there are some values, morals that you will be expected to follow. So that means ethics is a norm of conduct. It's a rule. It's a method. It's a standard of behavior. It's a principles. So these are the things which you have to be. Consider why you do the research. Okay, there are many definitions which have been given by different uh, authors. Okay, European Code of Conduct for Research Integrity, which is said research ethics involves application of moral rules and professional codes, conduct to collection, analysis, reporting, and publication of information about research subjects and experiments. Okay, so what they said, it is a moral rules and a professional course or professional code of conduct. Moral rules and professional code of conduct while you are doing the data correction, data analysis, reporting your research, and the publication of information. So where you are, are doing that moral rules and professional course, that is an ethics. And another definition by APA, American Psychological Association, which is said, the research ethics involves the moral principles and guidelines that govern the conduct of research. It ensures that research is carried out with integrity, respect for individuals, consideration for the potential impact on society. Okay, again, they say it's the moral principles and guidelines to conduct the research. American society. Again, uh, what the again next sentence is ensure that the research is carried out with integrity respect for individuals, consideration for the potential impact of society. So these three things which are considered in the definition. Our University Grants Commission is said this research is conducted in an ethical manner, ensuring, ensuring dignity, rights, safety, and the privacy within the researcher ecosystem. The researcher, if you are the researcher, we have our own ecosystem. There we are conducting the research, in the, uh, ensuring the dignity, safety, rights, and the privacy. Okay, so these are the different definitions given by the So, 
uh, other so everybody said about the ethical principles and the code of conduct okay so what are the ethical principles which you can follow? for example there are many ethical principles are there you i think you all are aware about that one is the honesty honesty report data results methods and procedures and publication standards okay you when you are doing the research you have first you have to report the data you have to analyze the content you have to follow the different methods and procedure so what the honesty is saying you, everything what are the procedure process which you are doing the research you do honestly okay you have to honestly report data you have to honestly do the result and methods procedure and when you do the publications do not fabricate falsify or misrepresent them okay so this is are the uh, unethical things which are doing you are fabricating or falsifying or misrepresenting them or whenever you do the research you should have the objectivity strive to avoid bias in experimental design data analysis data interpretation peer review personal decisions grant writing expert testimony and other aspects of research it should be objective objectivity is important as well okay a researcher should not follow any subjectivity in the research okay you should avoid any biasness in your research especially if you are doing the experimental research or when you are doing the data collection or when you are analyzing data there should not be any biasness no subjectivity should not be come to your mind while doing the data analysis that interpretation or you taking some decision grant writing so be objective or integrity keep your promises and agreements act with the sincerity strive for consistency of thought of action so you have to do with the integrity and another principles we can say uh, carefulness when you do the research because some some researchers will see there are working as a carelessness are there so avoid careless errors and negligence if you do it very carefully and critically examine your work it's very important this is which we are lacking our researchers we are not able to critically examine whatever other saying it is we just we are following it and that's your uh our uh, better we are following this you should whatever others are saying you should critically examine and uh, you critically examine your own work also and the work of your peers that means others so so that critically if you are examining then you will be find out what are the errors and other things are there and you will be more careful by reporting by doing your research for openness share your data because with some people some researchers they have the tendency they will not open they will not uh, share their data so they say we should have the openness in our mind when your research is concerned uh, share your data and uh, result ideas tools resources and uh, be open to criticism some of people some researchers will not uh, they can be uh, wear or they can be hear about any criticism okay you should open to criticism and uh, uh, if somebody have some suggestion with a new idea so you should be openly accepted and uh, respect for intellectual property okay because we are doing the research you have to follow or you have to use a different authors uh, work or you have to be uh, use some procedures and methods which have been adopted by others so we should honor the patents if somebody's work is there, we should honor it and uh, we should honor the copyrights okay and uh, any other form of intellectual property is there. so uh, we have to be follow to the all ethical aspects do not use unpublished data or third result without the permission if you are using the uh, published data so you have to be acknowledged okay and never plagiarize don't uh, take anybody's work in your research without acknowledging and uh, confidentiality okay so many we researchers you have to deal with many type of data so the data should be uh, having its own confidential uh, nature so protect confidential communications uh, such as papers or grants submitted for publications personal records trade or military secrets 
patient records, okay, individual uh, secrets or data. So we have to be follow the process. Or responsible publications publish in order to uh, advance research and scholarship. Okay, you should publish it for uh, in order to advance the research scholarship, not to advance it just your own career. Okay, don't publish the work uh, for your career. You should publish it uh, for the advance of research and scholarship. Okay, and to avoid the wasteful and duplication publications. Okay, some people will see they are publishing article without maintaining any quality. They will be busy with publishing uh, many papers, they whatever they wanted. Maybe in a year they're publishing 10 to 15 papers. Okay, without the com uh, with the compromising, you can say they're compromising the quality. So don't go for the uh, publications for their own work or their own scholarship. Go for it for the uh, advancement of research or we feel it will be contributing to the uh, realm of knowledge. Then only you go for the publications. And we should be a responsible mentor. Okay, as a researcher, okay, do it is a researcher's duty. We have to mentor others. Okay, mentor means to, for example, I am a teacher or you are a researcher. So we should be having the many junior researchers working with you. So we should, uh, as a mentor, we should help them. We should educate them or we should advise our students and promote their welfare and allow them to make their own decisions. Okay, it is a responsibility of uh, or as a researcher, as a senior researchers, we have to uh, help our juniors and we have to develop, develop a, a research, a conducive environment to do the research. And we have to give the advice to students to conduct the uh, many uh, good researchers because we have to motivate them to do the research. And obviously, we have to respect our colleagues and uh, treat them fair. And uh, we have the social responsibility to strive to promote social and uh, prevent, uh, mitigate social harms through research, public, and education focuses. Okay, we have to follow our research responsibility, promote social and good prevent, or mitigate social harms. No discrimination. Our discrimination against the colleagues, to our students on the basis of the sex, race, ethnicity, uh, other factors that are not related to their scientific competency and integrity. Okay, so we should not be having any discrimination against anybody without any, any sort of resource. And to maintain the competency. Okay, maintain and improve your own professional competency and expertise through lifelong education. Take steps to promote competence in science as a whole. Okay, so this competency you have to be professional competence and expertise we have to maintain throughout our education and life. So that has to be maintained in our research also. And the legality, we have to be very much aware about the legal issues and uh, we have to obey the relevant laws and institu relevant laws and institutional governmental policies. Okay, what are the government policies and institutional policies are there? That legal issues you have to be taken care of. And animal care as well. So that means, if, suppose if you are doing the research where you have to use the animals, so we should have a proper respected care for animals while use, using them in the research. Now, do not conduct unnecessary or poorly designed animal experiments. And uh, next is uh, human subject protection. When conducting the research on human subjects, minimize harms and risk and maximize benefits. Respect human dignity privacy and normal. Okay, so this is around 12, 13 principles which we discussed, these points which have to be take care while doing our research. And being the researchers, being a faculty members, uh, I think uh, when uh, we are inducting uh, the students to our research as a research scholar, we should be give a proper lecture on why, how, what are the ethical issues you have to be uh, carry out throughout your research. So there are many research guidelines are there. Okay, in different countries, they have developed on their own research ethics and uh, there are guidelines. For example, uh, there is a book on five principles for research ethics by American Psychological Association. 
and uh, the research ethics guidebook by uh, a resource for social scientists that is given by the economic and social research council uk ethical guidelines for good research practices association of social anthropologists uk australian code for responsible conduct of research 2018 australian government esrc framework for research ethics 2015 economic social research council uk so you find the many associations like american uk australia and other countries they have developed their own research framework to how to conduct a research in ethical manner so so then uh, you will be having the question what the our in indian context what are the uh, initiatives which you have taken for the research ethics so he indian context in academic institutions like university grants commission is managing more academic institutions they brought up a book a guidelines we can say a guidance of guidance document which is called in september 2020 it is known as the good academic research practices it was published by university grants commission it is available in the university grants commission's websites you can download it and uh, i think you should be uh, you try to read it okay it was written by the patwardhan desai and chavasya and uh, nag bhatnagar okay it is a guidance document so i think if you read this article this book and uh, i tell every department should keep a book a copy of this book and should give to the students to read it and uh, even teachers can also go through it they can understand how what what they we have to do the research and what are the mistakes which we are uh conducted or which are doing it knowingly or unknowingly as far as our research ethics is concerned and the university grants commission also started a new course uh two credit course for compulsory for the phd students so this took in 1920 they with a notification and uh, the next year onwards they started this course on two credit and course so compulsory for phd students okay so that syllabus which is a, uh, showing about the philosophy and ethics scientific conduct publication ethics and the various uh, methods to follow different research and publication ethics that two credit course it is compulsory for phd students and uh, ugc also uh, introduced the ugc care list of journals uh, because this university care list we can publish uh, good quality articles in the journals so they identified some pediatric journals and uh, they made some criteria for consider as a quality journals and uh, they encouraging or they given instruction to the researchers you have to be publish your journals in the ugc care list of journals only okay. and uh, there is another initiative by ugc they brought up with the shodh shuddhi it is a uh, software which you uh, it is a system you can see it's a, it's a system which they have developed where we can detect the plagiarism okay so with this website you can contact your uh, uh, regional centers or even institutions and you can log in and you can uh, uh, how do you say uh, you can check your plagiarism of your articles before you publish your articles you can see the show sindhu uh, show shuddhi you can uh, okay there are 1000 1091 members are there and more than 149 and 49,640 users have used it and 35 lakhs documents they already suggested okay so you can go we can log in here okay and uh, you can take the login id and you can check your plagiarism we will have the beneficiary list is there for example if you go for the state based uh, institutions your different states are there and different institutions are here you can select an institution for example if you are somebody from kerala so you will find out what are the um, institutions or members of this uh, short shuddhi you will find out the universities central university of kerala 
അബ്ദുൽ കലാം എ പി ജെ അബ്ദുൽ കലാം ടെക്നോളജി യൂണിവേഴ്സിറ്റി ചിന്മയ വിശ്വവിദ്യാലയം കൊച്ചിൻ യൂണിവേഴ്സിറ്റി ദിസ് മെയിൻ യൂണിവേഴ്സിറ്റീസ് ആർ ദർ ആൻഡ് യു വിൽ ഹാവ് ദി ഇമെയിൽ ഐ ഡി ഓഫ് യുവർ കോർഡിനേറ്റേഴ്സ് യു കൻ സെലക്ട് ദർ യു കൻ കോപ്പി ദർ ഇമെയിൽ ഐ ഡി ആൻഡ് യു കൻ കോൺടാക്ട് ദം ഫോർ ചെക്കിംഗ് യുവർ പ്ലാജറിസം ഓഫ് യുവർ ഡോക്യുമെൻറ്റ് ഇഫ് അതർവൈസ് ഇഫ് ദർ നോട്ട് പ്രൊവൈഡ് അതർവൈസ് യു കൻ ലോഗിൻ ഹിയർ Uh, create your login and uh, uh, in this software with the universities you can check your files. Okay, so these are some initiatives given by the University Grant Commission to maintain the research ethics. Or Shod Ganga, you know, it is a treasury of thesis. Okay, more than 3 lakh theses are there. So from there, it will be helping us to produce a plagiarism or the, to maintain the research of this. Because uh, once you know, your thesis will be available in the public domain. So you will be very, very much care about doing your research or writing your research thesis. Okay. Our University Grants Commission, they brought out in 23rd July 2018 about the uh, Gazette of India. They made a regulations for Uh, promotion of academic integrity and prevention of plagiarism in higher education institutions. They brought in 2018 as a regulation. With that regulation, which is showing that uh, 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 what are the different guidelines which is given, this much percentage, more than uh, 10% of similarity should be there in your thesis. These are some uh, initiatives uh, taken by various governments uh, in different countries especially in india by the university grants committees and what are the research and publication misconduct which you okay. let us see these are general misconduct which the researcher is generally for see these are the research and publication like this which are doing it one is a uh, simultaneous public submission of documents we are uh, submitting the document which is being an editor of a journal i find some authors they submit their articles in different journals at the same same day or same month simultaneously so sometimes once you are completing our procedure of all the review process and everything is over then we came to know the same publication is available in similar journals so it is an uh, it is a unethical manner to be submitting your work in different organization or different publishers in same manner. Not informed, no informed consent. Without consent of others, we are going to publish it or duplicate submission. We are submitting the work in the duplicate. We are sub submitting in the, the pieces in somewhere and we are submitting the same thing in some other pieces. As salami slicing, that means we are slicing that means the, the, we are doing a one to search and we are slicing into different purpose different purpose okay for example i am conducting a research on three institutions for my phd or for, for my project and i am publishing it into different papers or different institutions one by one they are calling it same salami slicing or no permission for data or information usage okay you are using the data which cannot be used or copyright infringement others work if you are taking without the permission or we are manipulating the image nowadays you will find many images in our uh, google and other things if you cannot use until or unless if it is a copyright or oh, data fabrication fabricating the data plagiarism okay taking the others work the data falsification authorship issues conflict of interest non displaced of safety procedures so these are the things which you are if you are doing it we will considering we are doing an unethical research okay so these are the things you have to take care of all this unethical misconduct and not only we should be away from all the things but we should make a awareness we should create awareness to our other fellow researchers about this. 
Okay. Out of this, we I will find the three things which is more unethical things, which is a researcher's a follow. One is a fabrication. Fabrication means it is a making of making up data or research and recording and reporting it. it. Means making up data. That means you are creating, fabricating the data. The da actual data is not there. You are uh, fabricating it. Generally, we'll say we are cooking the data. Cooking data. That means without doing the conducting the data, without conducting the interview, without collecting the uh, administering the questionnaire, and uh, we'll say we have received the data. And sitting at home, you are making up the data, and uh, you are giving the result of it. It's a fabrication. It is a very unethical doing the research in this way. Or falsification is a that means you're manipulating data. Data is there, but you're manipulating according to your whims. Okay, it is uh, manipulating the research materials, and manipulating that uh, equipment process, or sometimes you are omitting some data, sometimes you are uh, suppressing the data. So that way we are doing it, it's a falsification. So you cannot do make any alteration with your data that will be uh, unethical. Or the third common things which you can see in the research is uh, plagiarism. I find it is one of the most dangerous unethical practice which our academicians or academia and the scientists which is important. It is a, what is a plagiarism? It is an adoption or reproduction of ideas, ideas or words or statements of another person without due acknowledgement. There are so many misconceptions are there. What we follow, it we feel it. The plagiarism means if we are uh, taking uh, others. That means if sometimes you have to follow. Sometimes you have to use the concept of ideas or concept or statement of others. We can use it. There is no if you are using. Others work or others' ideas, it's not a plagiarism. When it becomes plagiarism, when it becomes your work will be plagiarized, if you are using it without due acknowledgement. Okay, without due acknowledgement. Because these things, many of our even senior people were not knowing, not aware about the things. Take, they're thinking that we cannot take any work of others. We can't use, we can't use. We can use their work. We can use their ideas, but we should give the proper acknowledgement. We should acknowledge it. Okay. Similarly, when you do the research, similarly we are going for publication. Also, same issues are the plagiarism and copyright infringement. If you're taking somebody's work, if you have using the material of the copyrighted things, you have to take the permission of that or duplicate publications, data fabrication, data falsification, peer review misconduct, citation manipulation, publishing in pediatric journals, okay? All these things which you will find in the, at the time of publication. So there will be many misconducts you find in that time of research. And when the research result you are going to publish, there also you'll find such a type of misconduct. And uh, what is a plagiarism? I think uh, most of you know the plagiarism means uh, it is uh, uh, it's an act of presenting the work of another as your own. Means if dusre ko work ko, dusre ka kaam ko, apne kaam bata ke, apna material mein, apna research mein, apna paper mein, apna thesis mein jab publish karenge, isi ko hum bolte hai plagiarism. Okay, it is act of presenting the work of another as your own. Because you are not going to acknowledge it. Okay. So actually, this plagiarism word it is coming from the Latin word. From that means it is a plagiar. Plagiar means to kidnap. Kidnap. So you are taking out things without uh, taking the permission of others. And means you are kidnapping means you are taking away that student, that peer person without taking the permission of what are those. That is a kidnap. So in the, those who are doing the uh, plagiarism work, actually they are doing it in a, uh, they kidnap it. Okay. So what you have to do, you have to uh, cite their work properly. Or if you are uh, without giving in particular credit, 
of original source if you cast as a plagiarism. Okay, there are different types of plagiarism are there. Okay, I think you you must start using it. You must start seeing it. Okay, sometimes sometimes if so do say a work code. That means a clone submitting on his work. Do say a kamko verb by term of use carrying it's a clone type. What is a clone? Word by word taking others work and publishing it. Or control C that means the significant portion of the text will be taken from one source. Take Jaga some copy character paste character. Or find and replace, changing some keywords and phrases and submitting others work. Or remix different paraphrases, taken from different paraphrases and submitting. Recycling. So these are all methods which you are following. It's a budget. Sometimes you'll find somebody writing the research and they will give the references. Okay, they'll give the four wrong references that we are calling as a 404 error. That means the doing the citations, there will be giving some inaccurate information about the source. Okay, inaccurate info, ina, inaccurate. That means uh, there will be no such uh, uh, the, what we can say content or source will not be there because it, there will be they wanted to mislead the people. And another issue we can see in this plagiarism is a self plagiarism. That means it is another interesting thing. The, here, uh, what you are copying, you are taking your own material. Okay, copy material you have previously produced and, uh, and passing it off as a new production. That is a self plagiarism. That is your own work, but you are producing it, which is showing it is on your own work. And you are producing it as a, a new production you work. Some people are doing it. They publish one work article in one journal and the same thing, some major portion taking it and publishing it uh, some other journals. Okay. So uh, we can use it. We do not say we can use our own work. We can use our own work. But the thing is that we have to be take care of it. Uh, that this work which you are uh, taking your own work, but you have to acknowledge it. It mentioned this has been published in this particular journal. Okay. So then there will be a question do I have to cite everything? What do I feel everything I have with the citation? No. No need of citing everything. Okay. So some facts that are widely known. Okay. For example, if I'm writing uh, New Delhi is a uh, capital of India, I don't need to give the reference for that. Uh, I'll say the sun rises at least. Okay, so there are some facts are the some information or the judgment which is considered as a common knowledge. Some kind of knowledge man. For example, I'm saying it's a uh Modi of Modi Narendra Modi is the Prime Minister of India. So everybody is it's a common knowledge, everybody has that. So I need no need of giving for such type of references for that. Okay. So so in that case, if something is uh, might be known in common knowledge, we don't want to give any references for that. Somebody is saying if it is uh, if I'm changing the words, I'm taking one paragraph of, of one author and I'm paraphrasing it, and uh, is, is it a considered as a plagiarism? Yes, it's a plagiarism. If you're taking the word and if you're changing and paraphrasing it and submitting it your own, it's a plagiarism. You can change, you can make changes, or you can uh, paraphrase the content, but still you have to give that knowledge because the idea taken from you, you've taken the idea from others. So you, in that case, you have to be sure yes, this idea has been taken from the uh, from this particular source. So I, this idea has been uh, given by this particular person. Okay. Then the then question will be there: Why we are talking too much talking about the project itself? Why we academicians are going to plagiarize it? Okay, there are many reasons why the academicians are plagiarizing the content. One is in order to improve the PS4. You know, I think the teachers, they have very good knowledge that if they wanted to get a promotion, the higher level, so they have to be score, a particular score, score you have to be overcome that particular score. So to get that particular score of a PS score, the magical number, uh, there will be no option. They have to publish some articles immediately. So they will be caught in this plagiarism. Or sometimes some institutions are saying they should be have mandated to require them to publish articles. 
for submitting your papers, submitting your thesis, or for your career, or for a particular year, you have to be submitting these papers. Or peer pressure within the academic community, or sometimes you are hurried to publish articles. Or some people, they don't have the understanding of the seriousness of plagiarism. They don't know what is plagiarism, how to write the reference, how to write, how to write the in-text, how to write the citations. So no references. They don't know how to write it, what is the seriousness. So then also they also uh, will be caught under this plagiarism. On the lack of strict academic discipline, cut and paste culture, poor study habits and careless attitude, lack of referencing skills. It's still a majority of our uh, public that uh, researchers, especially those who are researchers, those who are doing the research in the field of uh, social sciences and arts, they don't know how care about the that uh, giving the references for the works. Generally, they will copy from, they will be consulting different sources. At the la at last, uh, miss, uh, uh, end of the uh, all the chapters, at last page, they will give the references. It is not there. Right? Each and every chapter, or uh, each and every page, if possible, you have to give the references. Where does the supervisors fail? Sometimes being a supervisor, uh, there also will be affected this plagiarism concept because of the lack of awareness, insufficient training. Most of the teachers, they are not uh, having any, they have not even received any training, especially senior teachers about this uh, plagiarism and other things. Or inadequate communication with the supervisor and students, still they don't have any idea or overlooking ethical issues. Some people, some research center bother about what are the ethical issues of. Or pressure for results, lack of support, neglecting ongoing monitoring, publication pressure. Okay, all these reasons when the supervisors fail to uh, maintain the research ethics. There are many protection tools are there for uh, checking the plagiarism. I think you know, most of you are aware about that. Like uh, original, really it was orphan, identicate, Turnitin, plagiarism checker, grammar link, duplicate checker, copy links, plagiarism, uh, black scan, badge tracker, etc. Okay, so you can go for the social, the also universities can do it, or each and every publishers, each and every publishers, you can see each and every uh, department faculties now, you, you know, universities are giving for that. So plagiarism is a very dangerous thing. So you find many universities in Luxembourg and uh, you, uh, West Liberty University in Germany and uh, many earlier people. There are many people, they quoted the plagiarism. Many university school teachers, they quoted the plagiarism. So it is a very dangerous thing. So you have to, as a researcher, you have to be very careful while doing your research and while publishing it. So I can say, in a conclusion, you can say giving credit to where credits, credit is due is a very rewarding habit to form. It's a reward, this, its rewards are inestimable. Okay, so you don't be assistive, you don't hesitate to give credit of the other's work if you use in your research or in your publications. So giving credit where credit is due is a very rewarding habit. So what habit to develop? You have developed the habit to give the credit of others, those who are done that one. Okay, its rewards are in the student. You cannot imagine it. With that rewards, it will be it give you a peace of mind too, and you will be enjoying with the, your research and uh, your research and your publications without any sort of there okay so go for it without there is a, no fear will not be in mind you can do it your work if you acknowledge what our work what our things which you are taking from others okay so i would like to conclude with this i thank the all the participants all the researchers those who are patients listen my lectures uh, i couldn't get time to uh, have interaction with you people I'm sorry for that. If you have any questions or uh, any things to be clarified, any points to be clarified, they're most welcome.
Yes, participant. There is a there is any questions. Have any questions? Is there any minimum percentage for uh, plagiarism check as such? Uh, yes, sir. Just a moment. What, what, what is the question? Is there any minimum percentage for the plagiarism as such? Uh, uh, actually, what we have, we follow. Uh, In our university, uh, university condition that you just see saying it should be less than ten percentage, less than ten, less than ten percentage. Yes. Similarities should be less than ten percentage. If you the thesis and uh, some publication, some publishers like some publishers, they will be is restricting research articles should be uh, less than six percentage. But as far if you follow the UGC norms, it is a ten percentage. P for PhD thesis. Good evening, sir. Yes, yes, yes. Sir, my question is about uh, the pragmatism. When we when we uh, try to write the content from uh, uh, in our language, uh, and sometimes we use paraphrasing tool also, right? And uh, but somewhere you said that in your slide that if you not uh, reference them, then it will be con uh, included in plagiarism. I could I, I couldn't get the question. Could could you repeat? Hello. Hello, sir. Did you could you repeat the question? Uh, am I audible, sir? Yes, 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 you are audible. Sir, my question is about when we taken the content from any research paper or any thesis about my, my project work mm -hmm. and and uh, try to uh, paraphrase them. And then uh, in your slide, you mentioned that if you paraphrase them, it will be con uh, included in uh, plagiarism also, if you not reference in uh, reference that that original data, right, sir? Yes, yes. So we uh, have to be, we have to be referenced, if I, I'm trying to be somewhere, we have, to, I am trying to the paraphrasing tool somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. So I have to be definitely mentioned them in references also. You know, actually, the thing is that we are discussing about the ethics. Okay. So, if uh, there's a publication, for example, you are Asha, I think you are Asha. Yes, so, of course. Uh, Asha, I, you, are, you are published one paper. Okay. I think which, which is your area of uh, interest? Sir, I am working in the PhD in uh, education. Education. Okay. So, yeah. for example, if you are um, uh, working, you are working in the field of education and you publish an article on. Uh, uh, in a topic of education, for example, the problems of Indian education, you write an article. Yes. Okay, okay, sir. So even I wish to write an article on Indian um, problem of Indian education, then I can do one thing. I will take in on the whole articles. Okay. Oh, okay. And I can I use the billboard. I put it that uh, that you are that uh, full article in the billboard, and uh, okay. I can use the different uh, 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 what you can say the steps of uh, uh, paraphrasing. Okay, okay, so that I can get the your article, uh, that the content of your article, because this is a, a two-page article or three-page article. I'll get the same article, which is different language, okay, different content. Okay. Nobody can understand that is your articles. But the okay. idea or the problem, actually the problem, so the points are the same, which you raised. But the uh, that representation is different, isn't it? So okay. if I'm publishing it the with my name, as an Aushad Ali, I'm publishing it. Your article with yeah. the paraphrasing one or two after two, three uh, professional, uh, what we can say, professional and all the other paraphrasing method I'm using it. Is it uh, yes, ethical? No, sir. No, no I no. don't think so. No. Ah, it is not ethical things. So that is why no. we are saying if you say about the ethical things, uh, if you are using the same sentence of Asha which you use it, so it will be easy to detect it's a plagiarism. So we can paraphrase it because to avoid this. Uh, uh, that the software will say it is a uh, similarity is showing. So I can paraphrase it. But the content, the the points which you raise of uh, uh, problems of Indian education. So that things which I am producing it. So that, but it is your idea. It is your idea. Sir. So better if you are paraphrasing it. So better if you, I have to, um, uh, what I, I can say, I have to mention your name. Hmm. Isn't it? I better I have yes. to mention your name there. 
Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, sir. So, uh, as a researcher, I suggest to you, if you are paraphrasing the content, still uh, you have to give do acknowledge the author which you have taken the idea. Yes, okay. Sir. okay. Actually, sir, my point is there that when I am trying to. Uh, Actually, I don't know how the my my fellow beings is the published one by the one after in a very short durations they publish the paper and but when I am trying to write it I have a lot of content to read I have a token and time to the four to five months for a one research paper so I couldn't understand how they can do in the one month they can do the publish the paper so that's why my question is. Uh, as academician, so how can we? I raise my numbers of the publishing of research paper. No, other thing is that that is the ethical again the ethical things are there. It we, we cannot because as a researcher you know it is not possible to publish an article or in a uh, book uh, yeah. in a few day one in a month or two months. I seen one there was one exhibition in our university. I seen a professor who's published. Uh, uh, 15 books in a year. 15 books is a series. Because yes, writing on 15 articles is difficult for us to write. But how definitely. are you publishing the 15 books? So they are using some sort of unethical, I'm sure, they might have using uh, some sort of this type of issues. If people are doing it, if you are doing conducting research on it, you can easily can find out. They might have used some sort of a plagiarism methods or some content somewhere and there and there. They must have used it. Okay, so uh, that will be create a problem for them later on stage if somebody makes some complaints or other. Okay, so there'll be everything, there'll be uh, straight ways there or there'll be shortcut also. So okay. some people are using a shortcut for that purpose. Recently, I uh, I was an expert of an interview. There were there was one researcher uh, candidate. He brought a, a publication. He's, he's published uh, uh, 15 articles in last year, 2022. So that is surprising for us how he's published 15 articles. It so we can see it is showing a negative. It is not a showing any positive sign. If you are publishing this much article in a year, that means it is giving a negative. Uh, what you can say, negative feedback about that. So uh, don't go for it. Uh, what others are doing it. So do it of your own ethics, your own moral, or your own principles which you have to follow. That will be have in the long last. Okay, thank you so much. Sir. Okay, thank, thank you, Rasha. Or anybody? No more questions. I think, sir, there is a no more questions. Okay, thank you. Anybody? Okay. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you very much uh, for coming and giving uh, the knowledge regarding. Okay, thanks. And thank if you, you have sir, any you doubt further, so we can have a interaction. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much. Sir. Thank you.